Hi friends, in this video series, we are deploying machine learning models to various services from GCP, AWS and Azure. Today we look at GCP Cloud Functions. This is a serverless architecture for deploying uh, very simple functions uh, which can be used in microservices and which can uh, finish uh, within a few seconds and also does not require uh, some heavy hardware or computation, okay? Whereas in applications like Cloud Run, uh, the computations can be heavy and can run for very longer times. Okay, that's the main difference. Now, Cloud Functions is very similar to AWS Lambda Functions and uh, Azure uh, Functions. These functions, they typically triggered uh, to an event like uh, some SNS notification uploading uh, a file to a bucket or uh, some record change in the database. Uh, we can think of a scenario where let's say some customer uh, attribute has changed. Now we have a machine learning model uh, that predict if a customer uh, is likely to churn or not. Now let's say the customer uh, salary uh, uh, has changed. So we want to invoke uh, this ML model uh, to check if with this new salary, the customer is likely to churn or not. Okay, in such a scenarios, we can use cloud functions uh, for deploying machine learning models. All right, let's look at the code. Now, um, as I mentioned, uh, this is a function service, unlike Cloud Run, which is a container service, where we can run heavy computation, including model training. Okay, so we need to substantially change our deploy function because also it's not a web service uh, where we can use Flask Django uh, to create a web server, right? Uh, I'll quickly show you what we done uh, using a Cloud Run. So in Cloud Run, we have a train file, we have a deploy file where we created uh, a Flask application uh, with a uh, a post method and then we have created a docker where we ran both the trade file and deployed our application as a server using this deploy file right in cloud functions let's see what changes we need to make okay so here we have a bunch of inputs including cloud storage which is where our model is stored right so we cannot train the model on the fly uh, so we have already trained the model and put them in a storage bucket and also this function needs to be called main okay uh, 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 we cannot use any other name uh, like uh, when we did uh, using cloud run okay all right so define the storage client and define uh, this is where our uh, model file is, uh, the bucket and the file name. Now, uh, there are two states uh, to these serverless functions. One is the cold state and the second one is the warm state. So cold state is, let's say we deployed a function and we used, and then there is a time gap of let's say an hour, right? which means the function go into cold storage, uh, sorry, cold state. So when we invoke the function next time, we need to load the model again, okay? Whereas if we are making the requests continuously, then we want the model to persist in its memory, right? So that's warm state. Warm state meaning we are frequently invoking the endpoint are calling the function. Cold state mean there is a substantial gap between the function calls where the model anymore stored in the cache. Okay. So all we need to do is define our model variable as a global variable so that in frequent invocations, we don't really need to load the model again. Because in this case, our model is a very simple file because 
uh, it's taking only four features and uh, just classifying uh, the iris flower. Now, if we have, a, let's say, an object detection model or LLM model, which can be several hundreds of uh, uh, megabytes to even gigabytes, we cannot load the model every time we are invoking uh, the function, right? Okay, so what we are doing is we define, we initialize our model as none. Here we are creating a function where we declare model as a global variable and from the bucket, we are downloading the model to our local. This is Google Cloud function local, that compute local. Uh, and then we have loaded the model using joblib. Now this is our main function, right? So this predict is our main function. Now, as soon as we invoke the function, this is the function which is going to be called. We set our model as a global variable and then we are checking if model is none. Then only we are loading the model. We are downloading and loading the model into memory. Right? So the model becomes none only if our function is in cold state. Right? If our function is in warm state, the model still persists in cache so that this function is not invoked. So this way we are avoiding the model downloading and loading into the memory. So that way we can serve our requests faster with low latency. Okay. So this is a very important concept. If you are deploying uh, your ML models to uh, any serverless uh, 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 functions like GCP cloud functions, AWS Lambda or Azure functions. All right. Once we have done that, uh, it's straightforward. So the requests, it contain our input features. And then here we are mapping uh, uh, our prediction, which is going to be an integer uh, to, to the uh, flower classification. And just put the features together as an array, because that's what uh, uh, scikit-learn models expect. And here we are making the predictions, uh, mapping it to uh, the classes and uh, finally returning uh, the species as well as the predicted probabilities. Okay. So that's our main function. Uh, as I mentioned, this function, this file should be called main only. We cannot call this function any, we cannot give any other name. And then we have the requirements file. Okay. So that's all. We need only two functions uh, to deploy a function to GCP cloud functions, the main file and the requirements file. And now let's look at the commands. Um, so yeah, obviously we need to set up our uh, Google Cloud account and set some configuration variables. For example, this is how they look like. Uh, oops, sorry, not set, config. I think it's list gcb config list so yeah i already set up my variables like region uh, the project and the account okay uh, in case if you haven't uh, you can set them up uh, uh, with this set command and then you need to authenticate using gcloud auth login that take you to the web page uh, uh, and ask you to provide your credentials now in order to deploy the cloud function it's super simple we just need to do gcloud functions deploy and give your function a name. Here we are calling it uh, myML app. Uh, the region and the runtime, this is the most important one. Uh, so based on uh, uh, what functions and libraries, uh, imports, etc., we are using, uh, we should have, uh, we should define uh, the appropriate runtime. Okay. So this one, this Python 3.9, this is similar to. Uh, similar to uh, this Docker uh, base image, okay? Of course, uh, the cloud fu functions, they are all going to use uh, some Ubuntu uh, by default, but we can uh, use other uh, uh, base uh, OS also, but like Python 3.8, our runtime here is uh, Python 3.9, and the source uh, is the current working directory. Now this can be uh, a GitHub repository or 
a cloud storage uh, a path where we have already uploaded all our uh, uh, application files and the requirements okay now the entry point this is also important this is the predict so this would be what we name as our uh, entry point function so here we have called it predict so the entry point should be predict and then trigger it's http and there are two versions gen 1 and gen 2 obviously uh, we just use uh, the latest version and uh, allow unauthenticated this is just for testing purpose and memory 256 mb uh, there are uh, many other uh, variables uh, like maximum instances minimum instances uh, 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 things like that uh, but we are leaving all of them to default uh, we want to quickly deploy the model with a few lines of code okay uh, yeah so you just run this command from your uh, terminal i just already ran that so for example here you can see i just ran the command and i have deployed the function okay so this is how it looks like uh, so if you go here this is the uh, home page for cloud functions i have deployed just one function okay so if we go to the source so this is our main file which has uh, the predict function and the requirements file now we don't need this commands file but because it's uh, in the folder uh, it's uh, it's get uh, uploaded so we can remove this commands file all right and whenever we deploy a function we automatically get a url uh, so that we can use our invoke so let me copy this and here i have a test file uh, i think this url is the same yep yeah, url is the same and let me just invoke i just invoke the function so it should be in warm state we should get the prediction quick but let's see seems like not so first time it is taking some time but if i invoke now it should be faster as you can see this is faster right so we, when we invoke here the function is in cold state so so the model was none and this gets called so we have downloaded the model artifacts from the storage bucket and read them into memory so that's why uh, the first time the function took a bit longer but in the subsequent invocations uh, we get the results uh, quickly okay now other main thing uh, different from cloud run using cloud run we have deployed a web server right so that we can have get post uh, etc method and since we used fast api uh, we can uh, also have the docs whereas this one it's a simple function deployment right so here we cannot use fast api code and also to the endpoint uh, we 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 do not have uh, the documents or anything like that right so it's a very simple function uh, we can call using request curl uh, http invocations etc but uh, uh, we cannot have uh, the ui okay that's all for this video thank you very much